Hello children, in this class we will be discussing the loss of motion means entire loss of motion we will discuss in a shortcut just examination point of view where we have to uh, what we can say concentrate more and how we can prepare so that we can cover the entire chapter in a very less time that is a very very important thing which we have to remember children in a less time we have to cover more topics means the quality way how can we understand how can we learn in a shortcut way about a loss of motion we will see in this class children first let us talk about children in this entire loss of motion, we will be discussing only about one word. What is that? Force. So, throughout the chapter, mainly we will be discussing about force only. So, first let us recall what actually force is and what are the effects of force. Children here, about the force, you know, we have learnt in a previous class also. Force about this force. Children, it is an external cause which can change the either shape of an object, position of an object, even direction of object also means it can change the even dimensions also. So, how can we measure the force and is scale is a force is a scalar vector also it is very important. Children here first of all force is a vector quantity force is a vector quantity and its SI units are Newton whereas its CGS units are dyne. So, how these are related? These are related as 1 Newton is equal to 10 to the power of 5 dyne. 10 to the power of 5 dyne. Now, addition, especially in this session, you know, especially in a unity of the loss of motion, we will discuss the types of forces. So, children here, forces are classified into two categories. What are those? They are, they are, well, let me tell you here, they are contact forces and non-contact forces. So, force are classified into contact forces contact and here they are even non contact so now we need to discuss individually what are contact forces and the examples and what are the non contact forces and there also we need to discuss the examples only so what are the contact forces the forces which can act by means of physical contact I mean what? So, physical contact is involved. So, physical contact is mandatory. Then only these forces can act. So that is what these forces are called contact forces. So, the best example. So, early morning whenever we will go for you know uh, to, to clean our uh, teeth and everything you know we need to squeeze that the tube of the toothpaste. Then only what will happen that paste will come out. So, there we are using a muscular force. So, other than muscular force examination point of view what contact force are important because in examination day children they will some group of forces will be given and we are asked to uh, select which one is a contact force and which one is a non-contact force that is a very important even diagram based questions also can be asked. Now, we will see one by one under the contact forces. Children, the first one which we will be seeing is that force of tension is a very important force of tension. Dear children, here is in a rigid support and here is a string and here body is suspended, a body of mass that is a suspended. Children, do you think that this body of mass M will fall? No, it is not that. So, whenever a body is suspended by means of a string, a kind of force developed in the tension which will try to hold the body. That force developed in the string only we can call it as a force of tension. So, children there is a contact here. There is a contact between string and the body. That is what tension comes under contact force. And what is the direction of tension? What type of force? The tension is very important. Children tension is always it is a pulling force and its direction is always towards the point of suspension. Children, as it is a point of suspension, its direction will be upward direction and the weight of the body is acting downward direction. Children, in exam, they may ask to draw the diagram for this and they will ask us to show the like you know the number of forces with the direction acting on the bodies. So, tension is always upward direction and mg is acting always downward direction. This is the first tension force. Now, second one is second most important thing is that it is a normal reaction it is a normal reaction very 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 important children whenever any object is placed on any surface for suppose let us take here is in a table let us take here is a table so here is just for example let us take it is in a table 
on this table dear children one body is placed one object it might be book it might be any other body so it is not only book we can't say like that so any object is placed like this children due to the weight this body will try to press that surface of the table means what it weight exert it weight is exerted on the surface of the table in which direction in the downward direction downward direction it will be acting but dear children in reaction what happens then why this body is not going downward direction only because here the surface of the table exerts equal force on this body vertically upwards it's very very important means there will be a force which is coming into play which is equal to the weight and opposite in direction is called normal reaction and children normal reaction is not always upward direction it's a wrong concept it is perpendicular to the surface of contact so we have to see the surface always surface of contact so normal reaction is always perpendicular to the surface of contact it is not always upward direction so very 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 important so this is a normal reaction which comes under contact forces now the third force is very important thing is that here force of friction that is a frictional force even we can say that force of friction or frictional force it can be anything frictional force frictional force or force of friction anything is okay so children so generally what happens you know when you try to throw one body on the surface of earth what happens do you think that it will be continuing its motion like that only no after some time it is stopped what is the reason because of frictional force only for suppose dear children here is a horizontal surface on which a body of mass m is moving in this direction and why it is not continuing its motion continuously here why it is stopped after some time because dear children there will be a force acting in opposite direction so this force which is coming into the play is called frictional force so how to define frictional force dear children here so the force which is coming into play and which opposes the relative motion children it's very important the force which opposes the relative motion between the two surfaces is called frictional force so it is coming just because of the contact only that's what frictional force comes under contact forces and the next very important thing is that spring force here so children we know that sometime spring is compressed even sometime or what we can say spring is elongated also now let us take a case here the children here is a rigid suppose to which a uh, spring is attached and it is compressed it is a compressed so actually the children look at here so let us here is a spring is a compressed and let us say here one spherical ball a small light weighted spherical ball is placed then what happens the moment when you leave your hand obviously what will happen this spring pushes the ball that force only we can call it as a spring force children here our force external force which we are exerting like this to compress the spring and the spring force is in this direction in this direction means more the external force you apply more the body is displaced more the body is displaced and more the spring force will come into play it's very 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 important so here spring force also we can take it as a contact force just it is become is just the force of what we can say spring force is coming to play just because of contact so when you compress or elongate the spring then only what will happen a kind of force is developed in the spring which will try to exert on the body so what is that force dear children we can call it as a restoring force which means what when you compress it or when you elongate it what will happen you know that force will try to bring the spring into its original place only so that force only we can call it as a restoring force which will try to bring the spring into original position is a spring force and next one dear children the force is during the collision the force is during the collision dear children here during the collision of course in a general life we can call it as a accidents for suppose here dear children here is let us say some vehicle let us say here is a lorry and here is a car let us say this are car so during accident what will happen do you think that only lorry will exert force on the car no it's not that lorry will exert the force on the car at the same time car also will exert some force on the lorry just because both are coming in a contact so this phenomenon only we can call actually collision 
so the forces which are coming into play during the collision comes under contactive forces so children these are the important contactive forces very very important so what is a contactive force the force which can which can act by means of physical contact is called contact forces and the example which we discuss force of tension frictional force spring force normal reaction and collision forces muscular force and other forces also will come it's not that okay now fine now we'll discuss about the non contact forces and the example this is also very very important so non contact force which means what is children it's quite opposite to the contact forces means these forces do not require a physical contact then how they can act here means so there will be a field means there will be free field through field only these forces will interact to each other such a forces we can call it as a non contact forces children here in a non contact forces the first one let us say it's a electrostatic force so very important electro static force electrostatic force means children how electrostatic force is coming for this the main reason is the charge so around the charge there will be electric field due to that only it exerts some force on other charge means here children let us take a positive charge and one more let us take a positive charge so what will happen to children between these also force will come into play but which is a repulsive force which is a repulsive force whereas when you take a opposite charges one is a positive one more is a negative digital then what will happen both are attracted by each other which means what electrostatic force might be repulsive force or attractive force now the second one is magnetic force second one is magnetic force children so how this magnetic force will be coming so around the magnetic pole dear children here also if you can take a two south pole and a south pole then what will happen there will be a repulsive force even you can take a north pole north pole also there will be repulsive force otherwise you take one south pole and you can take a north pole and definitely there will be some attractive force so children the very important thing is that here electrostatic force and the magnetic force these might be attractive force or repulsive force and the third is very important thing is that gravitational force children third one is a very important thing is that it's a gravitational force gravitational force so children the specialty of the gravitational force is that it is always attractive force it is always it is always attractive force so how to calculate the gravitational force between the two bodies we will we will discuss when we are discussing the universal law of gravitation so gravitational force always attractive forces only okay children this is see under non contact force only again these are repulsive it might be repulsive or might be attractive but whereas gravitational force is always attractive force now dear children on which factors does a uh, magnitude of non contact force depends a very 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 important children is very very important so here the magnitude of the non contact force dear children is inversely proportional to the separation between the uh, what we can say two charges or a two poles let us say the best example when two magnets are placed uh, near to each other force will be more might be attractive or might be repulsive when they are placed far definitely the force of attraction or force of re repulsion will be bit weak only so which means what is children the force of attraction or repulsion this is f is what here magnitude of non contact force is inversely proportional to the separation between the two bodies children very 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 important so under this we have two special cases what happens when separation distance between two bodies is halved and what happens when separation distance to between what two bodies or uh, two poles two charges is doubled let us take this very 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 important children so based on this definitely we can expect the question so what happens if separation distance is doubled children when the separation distance is doubled the new force will become 1 by 4th of previous force initial force very very important means what as the separation distance increases the force decreases how many times four times whereas if r is doubled r is sorry halved the separation distance is halved then what happens obviously the force of attraction or repulsion is increased but how many times four times that is f dash is equal to four times of f so these are the two important based on which we can expect the numericals children let us see one small example small example like this it may be given 
So here is the two bodies M1 and here is M2. So they are separated by initially they are separated by distance R so that the force of attraction is for example let us say some 80 Newtons. 80 Newtons. So in exam they will ask what happens if the separation distance between the two bodies is doubled. So directly use this formula F dash is equal to 1 by 4 into 80. So it will be 20 Newtons. This is how we can calculate. Whereas the second case is that children if the separation distance is halved then how to calculate the force that is F dash is equal to 4 times of F it is 4 into 80 this is going to be 320 Newtons. So children this is how we can understand the contact forces and non-contact forces and this is how we can calculate the magnitude of the non-contact force. Now we will discuss Newton's first law of motion and inertia and types of inertia. Newton's first law of motion. So, Newton's first law of motion. So, children, Newton's first law of motion mainly it will talk about inertia. So, here we need to understand what is actually inertia and which factor does the inertia depend and the types of inertia. Children, first of all, what is the Newton's law of motion here? First law of motion. If any object is at rest means it will continue its state of rest whereas if any object is in uniform motion will continue with the same uniform motion in a same direction unless that particular body is exited by some external force. So this is what actually Newton's first law of motion which means what it is mainly talking about inertia. So then what is the inertia day children? Just try to think about an object for example your book might be lying on a table. So today morning for example, morning 10 o'clock it is placed there. Just you think that nobody is applying on the force, nobody is applying force on that book. Then what happens? You observe after 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours. What will happen? It will stay back there only. Which means what? If any object is at rest means it will try to continue its state of rest like that totally. Whereas if any object is in motion, unless you apply some force on it, it will try to go along a straight line path with the same velocity with the same velocity. So this property of a body will we can call it inertia which means what the tendency of an object to continue either state of rest or state of uniform motion is called inertia. And each children here. So inertia mainly depends on mass for suppose dear children. Let us take here is body A here is and here is let us take one more is body B. Just think that dear children it is 50 kg, its mass is 50 kg, where its mass is 5000 kg, 5000 kg. Now just you think in which case it is very easy to move the body or else you think in which case body will accept the change in it. So obviously body A will accept the change in it whereas body B does not hear which means what as this body is accepting the change it has inertia, less inertia. This body is not accepting the change, it is not accepting. What is the reason? Because of more inertia. So then how can we mix on which factor based on what we are deciding either less inertia or more inertia depends on the mass which means what more the mass more the inertia less the mass less the inertia. So here inertia is directly proportional to the mass. So it is very 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 important means more the mass more the inertia less the mass less the inertia. Now, we will see the types of inertia. Children, mainly there are two types of inertia here. Look at here. One is what here? Inertia of rest. First one is inertia of rest. Inertia of rest. Whereas, second one is inertia of motion. Inertia of motion. First, let us discuss what actually inertia of rest and we will discuss few examples let us recall once. Children what is the inertia of rest? If any object is at rest and there is no external force acting on the body then what happened? The body will stay back there only means it does not change its position by itself. So that property only we can call it as a inertia of rest which means what? The tendency of an object to continued state of rest unless there is external force acting on it is called inertia of rest. Example teacher, look at here. Example, the best example teacher. Let us take here first example. 
here is a vessel with wide mouth with the wide mouth let us see it is mouth now dear children on this let us put on cardboard over this mouth cardboard is placed exactly on the cardboard above the mouth of this vessel a marble is placed a marble is placed the moment this cardboard is taken out without disturbing the marble without disturbing the marble then what will happen that marble will get into this glass vessel what is the reason because we are applying force on the cardboard only we are not applying force in the marble so as we are not applying the force in the marble it won't change its position it wants to stay there only but as we remove this cardboard there is no support so what will happen it will get into it just because of inertia of rest even teach children whenever we are playing a carrom board coins so the game called you know that business so we will place one co coins one above the other one above the other sometimes when you can hit the bottom coin very fastly very quickly then what will happen you know the bottom most coin only is removed other coins again will stay back there only which means what as we are applying force in the bottom coin that is replaced and other coins we are not applying the force so they'll try to stay there only and one more very important thing is that in the children just take a situation of for example here is a bus okay now here is a bus you think that when passenger passenger is standing simply and the bus is at rest only initially and just to think the situation where passenger is not observed that driver has come and is about to start then what happens when bus starts suddenly it's our common experience that our body will means we will try to go back we will try to fall backward only what is the reason here the children when you can notice here initially body is at rest bus is red so that the person has some inertia of rest the moment when the bus is taken forward what happens you know the feet it is in touch with the floor of the bus due to the friction this lower part of the body is taken forward because a frictional force is acting but whereas upper part of the body dear children there is no force acting so what will happen upper part of the body will try to stay back there only whereas lower part will try to go along the bus due to which what will happen we feel we fall backward so this is what inertia of rest and a few example now come to the inertia of motion children what is the inertia of motion here so here the tendency of an object to continue its state of its state of direction its state of motion in a particular path in a particular direction is called inertia of motion inertia of motion very 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 important means if you do not apply any force if there is external force if a body is going for example if a body is going with a 10 meter per second in east direction in east direction it will continue with the same speed in the same direction just because of what actually inertia of motion now let us see the few example for this the best example is you might have noticed that athlete the person who is participating in athletics especially long jump you know the person will just take will move few steps backward and he'll be coming running 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 so that what will happen he can take a more length he can jump easily the reason is that as a person is coming and running what happens you know he will try to keep his body in motion due to which his body will gain more inertia of motion due to which he can take long jump very very easily and one more thing you know whenever we are doing cycling just try to stop pedaling then do you think that the moment when you stop the pedaling cyclist stop no it will go some time just because of inertia of motion and even in our uh, house also the fan when the fan is in motion you know, try to switch off the fan then what will happen do you think that the fan is stopped immediately no due to the inertia of motion it will rotate some more time and one more the best example based on the bus only we can understand by this time you think that bus is in motion already bus is in motion bus is in motion and the person is standing in it suddenly suddenly what happened just you think that the situation where driver applies the brakes suddenly then what happens definitely we fall forward why do we fall forward it's very very important the reason is that children as a bus is in motion along with the bus the passenger also is in motion means he has some inertia of motion the moment when the driver applies the brakes suddenly bus will come to the rest and one more thing children and this lower part is in contact with the floor of the bus 
due to the friction what will happen you know and this lower part force is applied means what here along with the bus this lower part will come to the rest but whereas the children there is no force acting on this upper part though the bus is stopped what will happen you know this upper part will try to go forward due to which what will happen he fall forward so this is because of inertia of motion children that is the reason whenever we are trying to what a get down from a running bus or running vehicle we have to go some more time we have to run some more time with the what will happen that particular vehicle if not what will happen our feet will come to the rest immediately but whereas our upper part is in motion so due to which what will happen we fall we fall forward actually okay children fine so this what actually newton's first law of motion and inertia and types of inertia so now before going to discuss about newton's second law of motion dear children let us discuss one very important physical quality is called linear momentum so it is linear momentum linear moment so what is a linear momentum and how can we write the change in linear momentum is very very important so children here if a body of mass m is moving with the velocity v then linear momentum p is defined as the product of mass and velocity so the product of mass and velocity is called linear momentum and children linear momentum is a vector quantity it's very important vector quantity and its direction is in the direction of applied force always and what are its units its si units are kg meter per second whereas its cg units are gram centimeter per second so this is what actually linear momentum is then how can we express the change in linear momentum children it's very important let us see the change in linear momentum so children here change in linear momentum change in linear momentum so here we should be bit careful regarding this change in linear momentum children as linear momentum is equal to m into v so change in momentum means what delta p is equal to delta into general we expect this but each children here only we have some conditions so can we write like this can we write like this means here we have conditions so what are those conditions very very important so children if here for example if if mass is constant children if mass is a constant if mass is a constant then change in momentum can be written as mass into change in velocity because mass remains constant so you cannot put change symbol for a mass you cannot put inside actually okay fine whereas if mass is not constant or else if mass is constant if mass is constant but the condition is that the velocity of the body is approaching the velocity of the light the velocity of the light is very very important then what will happen here we can write delta p is equal to delta of m into v m into v whereas children look at here still we can write like that only m is a constant very very important and one more thing is that dear children if speed of the body is approaching the speed of the light children if the speed of the body is approaching the speed of the light mass not remains constant mass will become variable mass will be variable mass will be variable so we can write delta p is equal to delta into mass into velocity so this is how actually we can express linear momentum and we can write the change in linear momentum okay children here the formula and the units are very very important and linear momentum is a vector quantity linear momentum is a vector quantity now we'll discuss the newton's second law of motion we'll discuss the newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion children so according to newton's second law of motion the rate of change of momentum that is change in momentum at what rate the momentum is changing is directly proportional to the external force which is applied very very important so what is a linear moment what a newton second law of motion the rate of change of linear momentum is a directly proportional to the external force not internal force addition it's very important so here the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the external force external force and 
that change in linear momentum is in the direction of applied force. Always the change in linear momentum is in the direction of applied force. Very important. Fine. Now children, so let us write like this. Means if you can take a very very small change, delta p represents change in linear momentum. dp represents small change, very very small change. So for a very small change, we can write like this. F is proportional to the dp by dt. But children, we know that p is equal to mass into velocity. Now let us substitute in the place of p. We can substitute mass into velocity. Then it is going to be f is proportional to d by dt of m into v. In a normal situation, normal conditions, mass always remains constant. So we can write f is proportional to the mass into d by dt of v. Children, dv by dt is what? Rate of change of velocity. Rate of change of velocity is called acceleration. So it is f is proportional to the mass into velocity so f is equal to k into m into a k is what proportional constant its value is taken as a 1 this value is taken as 1 so finally we got the magnitude of the force that is f is equal to m into a f is equal to m into a children based on this we can expect the numericals very very important very very important so before going to see the numerical let us see the what are the units of force this is a formula from which we can derive the units so what are those let us see children in a SI system in a SI system mass is measured in kg whereas acceleration is measured in meter per second square therefore force is measured kg into meter per second square children this kg per meter square only we can call it as a newton so here s i unit of newton is s i unit of force is newton we can write up whereas in a cg system in a cg system mass is measured in grams acceleration is measured in meter per second square so a force is measured in gram meter per second square so children this gram meter per second square only we can call it as a dyne so dyne but here one very examination point of the the relation between newton and dyne is very important the Newton and Dyne is a very very important. Look at here, yes, we will see the derivation. The relation between Newton and a Dyne, we will see. Children, one Newton, look at here. So, here is Newton is nothing but what, dear children? Kg meter per second square. But, dear children, we know that a kg is equal to 1000 grams. This can be written as 10 power 3 gram, whereas meter is equal to 100 centimeter it can be written as 10 square centimeter now you substitute in the place of kg and a meter these values let us substitute then we get here 1 newton is equal to 10 power 3 gram into 10 square centimeter anyhow the second square is a common in SA system or CJ system children 10 power 3 into 10 power 2 is how much 10 power 5 so it is 10 power 5 into gram centimeter per second square but dear children we know that gram centimeter per second square is called dyne so here 1 newton is equal to 10 to the power of 5 dyne 10 to the power of 5 dyne is very important or we also can write like this 1 dyne is equal to 10 to the power of minus 5 newton so this is how SI unit of force and the CJ force are related so this is very 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 important relation and even derivation also nature in exam they will ask us to derive the relationship between newton and dyne very very important okay fine so this is newton's second law of motion and how can we derive f is equal to ma and this is a relation between dyne and a newton or newton and dyne now dear children how force acceleration and mass are related so, graphical representation is a very 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 important graphical representation so showing the graphs between force versus acceleration acceleration mass these are very important look at here and the first one is let us see here force versus acceleration let us see force versus acceleration dear children let us take a body of mass m another also same body means both are having same mass let us say dear children here a force f1 we are applying here force f2 is applying let us say the acceleration of this body is a1 and this acceleration of this body is a2 first suppose dear children if f1 is greater than f2 then what will happen obviously a1 will be greater than a2 which means what 
as the external force increases acceleration also increases if the external force is less acceleration less which means what here force is directly proportional to acceleration when when mass remains constant mass remains constant look at it for this how the graph is going to be so this is force is taken on x axis acceleration is taken on y axis and we get a straight line passing through the origin and here mass remains constant so this is a force versus acceleration graph now let us see the second one force versus mass force versus mass now children look at it let me take a uh, this body of mass capital m and here is a body of mass small m to produce the children same acceleration in both bodies same acceleration so here force f1 is acting here force f2 is acting do you think that same amount of force required to produce a same amount of acceleration in a bodies of different masses obviously no so obviously here the body of uh, what a more mass needs more force to produce a same acceleration so which means what more the mass more the force is required less the mass less the force is required so which means what here force is proportional to the mass force is proportional to the mass so for this how the graph is going to be this is mass and here the force so let us take here again we get a linear line like this only but here the thing is that acceleration is constant acceleration is constant now the third one is mass versus acceleration mass versus acceleration children look at here here is body of mass capital m a body of mass small m now dear children here force f is acting here also same force is acting but out of these two bodies dear children in which case the what are the force which is acting will produce more acceleration obviously in this let us say the acceleration produced in this case is a2 here is a1 so it is noticed that dear children a2 is greater than a1 a2 is greater than a1 since mass is less this small m is less than to capital m means what for a same external force dear children more the mass less acceleration less the mass more the acceleration which means what mass and acceleration both are inversely proportional to each other that is here mass is inversely proportional to the acceleration mass is inversely proportional to acceleration so in this case let us make a graph it is mass versus acceleration we get hyperbola like this because both are inversely proportional right so here f remains constant children this is how actually we can represent we can represent the relationship between force acceleration force mass mass acceleration with the help of one. this is a very very important examination point of view just copy it fine now dear children the important next the important concept is impulse so what is a impulse what are its units is a very very important so let us look at here let us learn impulse 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 so in terms some textbooks it is represented with a capital j in some textbooks it is represented with a capital i also so children from the uh, newton second law of motion we all know that delta p is equal to sorry delta p by delta t <coughs> is equal to force so from this dear children delta p is equal to we can write as f into delta t children this delta t is a very 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 small very 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 small very small so this f into delta t only represent impulse this only represent impulse so how to define impulse what is the impulse children the maximum force acting in a less interval of time the more force the more magnitude the high force is acting in a short interval of time is called impulse or impulsive force also impulse or impulsive force means what simply it is force maximum force in a less interval of time maximum force in a less interval of time is called impulse let us let us see its si units as so si units are newton second and its cjs units are dyne second children here force into delta t is what nothing but force into delta t is what change in linear momentum that's what it said impulse is equal to the change in linear momentum change in linear momentum change in linear momentum so then how can we understand how can we understand the more 
about an impulse and impulsive force. This is the best example let us take. So what happens when a glass vessel will fall on the hard floor, it will get broken. Whereas when it fall into what we get some sand surface, then what will happen? It will not get broken. The reason is that when it falls on the hard floor, it will come to the rest immediately. Means the time of contact is less. So more force will act. Whereas when the same glass fall in a what we can say on a sand surface, what will happen? That glass will go into the sand some more time. Means what? The time of uh, what are the time in which the glass is coming to the rest is increases. As the time increases, obviously, as the time increases, obviously, the force decreases. The impact of force will decrease. So this is a reason. Even same thing you can notice whenever a fielder is trying to catch a ball in a cricket match, he'll try to take his hands bit back. The reason is that in doing so, he is trying to increase the time in which the ball is coming to the rest. So as the time of uh, the time in which ball is coming to the rest is increases, obviously the impact of force will be less. Okay. So this is what actually impulse. And one more important thing: impulse is a vector quantity. Impulse is a vector quantity. Okay, children, just you copy it. Now we will discuss the last. What we can say the last law of Newton is what Newton's third law of motion. This is very, 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 very small, very, very small and very important also. Newton's third law of motion. <coughs> Newton's third law. Newton's third law. So, what does it say? It's a very simple, isn't it? It says that every action, to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Equal and opposite reaction. So now children, look at here. Let us take a table. Here a small thing. So on this table, a book is lying. Let us say a book is lying. Let us say here is one book is there. Then what will happen, dear children? Look at here. Due to the weight of the book, it exerts some force on the table. That only we can call it as a weight. Is it called weight? But in reaction, what will happen? What will happen? You know, this table also exerts same force, same force, but in opposite direction on the book. That only we can call it as a normal reaction. Normal reaction. Children, here we need to understand very, very important thing. So by seeing this diagram, sometimes generally what we feel, we feel that normal reaction and weight both are acting on the book, we think. No, it is wrong. It is wrong. That is not correct. Here, weight is acting on the table by the book, whereas Normal reaction is acting on the book by the table, which means what here action reaction this both two forces cannot act on the same body rather these two forces that is action and reaction both will act on two different bodies which means what here two bodies are involved. This is what very 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 important action will act on one body whereas reaction will act on another body. This is what we have to notice very very important. Find each and let us see the example. So, what are the examples? Yes, we know that for example, we are walking. How we are able to walk? So, during our walk, we will try to exert, we will exert some force on the earth. Then in return, what will happen? Earth pushes us so that we will move forward. Even during swimming also, what happens? As we are pushing the water back side, in result, we go forward. The same way rocket also, whatever the fumes which are coming, the gases exert force on the earth's surface in a reaction, the, uh, the rocket is pushed upward direction. So these all are examples. And one more important thing, children. So if you can notice this, for example, here is a shore, here is some like boat or something is there. A person is standing here, for example, he is trying to jump on the shore. Then what will happen as he wants to jump, dear children, what will happen, you know, his with his feet, he has to push the boat backward. Backward. In reaction, what will happen? Boat also exerts some force on this person. So then what will happen? A person easily can jump. The person can jump easily. So these are the few examples for action reaction. That is Newton's third law. What is the Newton's third law? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravitation. Children, in a gravitation, the important concepts are Newton's universal law of gravitation and there we have to learn about acceleration due to gravity and the relation between a small g and a capital G and how g value varies from place to place and after that the difference is between mass and weight. Now first let us see once Newton's universal law of gravitation. 
This is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Mainly, we will talk about the force existing between two objects placed anywhere in the universe. Means it says simply that if any two objects are placed at a certain distance, definitely there will be some attractive force. And already we discussed that gravitational force is a always attractive force. Teacher, according to this, for suppose here is body of mass m1 and another one is body of mass m2 let us say it is m2 and here is m1 such a that the separation distance children the separation distance always must be taken from the centers of the body center of gravity of the bodies and they are separated by distance r so that f is a attractive force f is a attractive force and newton says that whatever the attractive force which is existing between two bodies is always proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance and already we know that universal law of gravitation is a inverse square law means what is the force which is existing between that is inversely proportional to the separation between them now look at here so according to this f is directly proportional to the product of the masses and f is inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance now let us combine these two equation this can be like this f is proportional to the m1 m2 by it is r square and whenever proportional is there that can be replaced by a constant that is here f is equal to g into m1 m2 by r square so this is a mathematical form of newton's universal law of gravitation children if in exam they will ask if they will ask state newton's universal law of gravitation what you have to write don't write this we have to write that according to newton's law of gravitation when two bodies are separated by distance r the force of attraction between the two bodies is proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the separation you should tell if not if not if they will ask like you know write the mathematical expression for a newton's universal law of gravitation then you must write directly this f is equal to g into m1 m2 by r square then what about here this capital g so it's very 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 important so here capital g is called here universal gravitational constant so now let us learn in detail about it universal gravitational universal gravitational constant very 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 important so what is universal gravitation constant what is its value and what are its units are very important examination point of view how to define universal gravitational constant children to understand this let us take uh, two bodies of mass 1 kg each so here two bodies 1 kg mass and they are separated by distance of 1 meter and definitely the force f will be acting now here it is m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 1 kg and r is equal to 1 meter now substitute in this formula children so here f is equal to r else we can rewrite like this the formula as we are defining gravitation constant let us make gravitational constant that is capital g as a subject so it can be g is equal to f into r square by it is m1 into m2 now let us substitute the values f into 1 square by it is 1 into 1 which means what g is equal to f so how to define gravitational constant here children mathematically gravitation that is a universal gravitation constant is equal to the force of attraction between the two bodies of mass 1 kg each and separated by distance of 1 meter so in that case whatever the force of attraction is existing is equal to the gravitational constant children its value is very 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 important so here g value is 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kg square so children here the value is important as well as the units are very very important so capital g is equal to 6.67 into 
10 to the power of minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Now we will see the relation between children is very very important relation between that is capital G universal gravitation constant and small g acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity children we discussed capital G what is the capital G the force of attraction between the two bodies of mass is 1 kg each and separated by a distance of r distance of 1 meter is called universal gravitation constant now let us recall about small g also a small g is what acceleration due to gravity how to define it children the acceleration produced in a freely falling body the acceleration produced in a freely falling body due to the gravitational force due to the force of gravity is called acceleration due to gravity now we are going to see the relation between capital g and a small g for suppose dear children here is an earth surface here is an earth let us take here is an earth such as that here capital r is a radius of the earth and here an object of mass small m is here and the mass of the earth is let us say capital m now dear children so this we can take as a mass m1 this we can take as a mass m2 and they are separated by of course here some height h will be there but dear children when compared with this radius this height is negligible the height is a negligible so then we can take directly the distance between these two bodies as a capital r only capital r only will take now children can we apply here universal law of gravitation we can apply how because here two masses are separated by distance some r so definitely there will be some force of attraction so that how can we write here f is equal to capital g into in the place of m1 small m you should take in the place of capital m sorry m2 we should take as a capital m by square r square it is so let us say it is equation one and each children whenever an object means near the earth surface every object is pulled by some force that only we can call it as a weight so the force with which an object is pulled by the gravity is called weight so that is how much each children that is w is equal to mg so this w is nothing but the force it's nothing but the force only so it is the equation 2 it is the equation 2 now as lhs are equal to each other rhs can be equated so here mg is equal to this is g m m by it is r square so small m small m gets cancelled here so g is equal to g m by r square children with this formula we can make some conclusions very 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 important so this is how small g and a capital g are related but dear children here do you find a term related to the mass of the body no here small m is not at all there in this formula which means what acceleration due to gravity does not depend on the mass of the body that is the reason when you take a two bodies with a different masses when they are left in a vacuum both will reach at the same time only what is the reason what is the reason because acceleration due to gravity does not depend on the mass and one more thing dear children in this formula capital g and a capital m these are constants for a given a planet constant for earth if you can take dear children capital g and capital m are constant only the variable is what actually capital r is a variable capital r is a variable so here g that is acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the radius of the earth and we all know that here radius of earth is not the same at all places it is changing from place to place that's what capital g value also changes now we will see where g value is a maximum where g value is a minimum so children for us the important conclusion which we got is that g is inversely proportional to the square of the radius first suppose dear children here let us take here is earth so that it is a equator and here is a poles it is a poles and here is a equator let r e is a radius at a equator whereas r p is a radius at a poles and it is very clear that dear children radius of earth at a equator is greater than that of the radius at a pole and here acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to r so what happens 
the place where r value is more there g value is less whereas the place where r value is less g value is more so children as r e is greater than the r p <coughs> and let us say g e is a acceleration due to gravity at a equator and a g p is acceleration due to gravity at pole so we can write like this g e is less than that of the g p so this how which means what dear children at equator it's very very important at equator let us write here at equator as r is maximum r is maximum g is going to be minimum g is going to be minimum whereas at pole at pole here r is minimum so here g is going to be maximum so children this is how g value varies from place to place children two points here we have to remember very very important things g is not depending on the mass of the body acceleration due to gravity does not depend on the mass of the body and here acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the radius that's what at the equator as r is maximum g is minimum whereas at the poles r is minimum so g is maximum so this is how capital g and a small g are related and this is how g value varies from place to place now dear children we'll see the very 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 important thing is that what is a weight and what is a mass and the difference children examination point of view examination point of view the difference is between weight and mass is very very important now let us see the separately we'll see so that you can take the points to differentiate what actually weight and what actually mass children now let us discuss about the first mass so what is mass dear children so let us recall the definition which we learned long long back means in many class every class will be learning about what actually mass is so the amount of matter contained in your body is very very important the first point is that here the amount of matter the amount of matter contained in your body is called mass now dear children of course there we have one condition if object is not moving with a uh, what a speed of the light then what happens we all know that of course practically it is highly impossible no object can move what equal to the speed of the light so here mass always remains constant it's very very important so the second point regarding mass is that it remains constant it remains constant it remains constant it does not depend on the direction which means what mass is a scalar quantity children mass is a scalar quantity mass is a scalar quantity and what are its units dear children in sa system it is measured in kg whereas in a cg system it is measured in a gram it is measured in gram and one more very 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 important thing so what is that device which we use to measure the mass of an object is a physical balance or a beam balance also you can take there is beam or physical balance beam or physical balance so children these are the point which we have to remember regarding the mass now dear children look at here about a weight so whatever the points which we covered for a weight of mass so let us think about the similar points so first definition of weight so what is a weight dear children the force with which an object is pulled by the gravity is called actually weight let us write here the force with which an object is pulled by the gravity is called weight and it's the very 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 important thing is that here how can you measure the weight w is equal to m into g but each one here mass is a constant as mass is a constant each one here w is proportional to the g which means what as g value varies w also varies it's very very important 
So here weight of the body is not constant. It depends on the place means it varies from place to place. Why it varies from place to place? Because it is proportional to G value. As R value changes, G value changes. Hence here W value also changes. So here we can write that it can change. It can change from place to place. It can change from place to place, place to place. And one more very important thing is that here, dear children, weight is a vector quantity. Weight is a vector quantity. Then what are its units? Weight is as weight is nothing but the force, dear children. In a SA system, we use Newton, whereas CGS units, we use a dime. And other than this, we have kilogram force and a gram force also we use to measure the weight of an object. And finally, the very important thing is that here, what is the device which we use to measure the weight? That is a spring balance. That is a spring balance. So children, spring balance is used to measure the, uh, what we can say, weight of the body. So children, these are the concepts of loss of motion in a shortcut. Children, uh, we'll see uh, just a two numerical, just example numerals. Let us see here. The first one, dear children. Children, here a body of mass 5 kg. It is moving with... 10 meter per second. It is moving with a 10 meter per second. Then find the linear momentum. Children, here mass is given as 5 kg, whereas velocity is given as 10 meter per second. Then we know that linear momentum is equal to mass into velocity. So it is 5 into 10. So this is 50 kg meter per second. So this is how actually we can expect the numericals based on linear momentum. And the second one, you look at here. Here body of mass 2 kg, body of mass 2 kg and here a force of for example 10 Newton is acting. Obviously if the net force is acting on the body there will be some acceleration. Then in this question we are asked to calculate the acceleration produced. Children it is given that here mass is equal to 2 kg and force is equal to 10 Newton and it is asked us to calculate the acceleration. So according to Newton's second law of motion here. F is equal to mass into acceleration. F is equal to mass into acceleration. So here this is 2 into 10. So this will be 20 meter per second square. This is acceleration produced. Children, here as acceleration produced, don't go to the equation of motion. So that when we have to apply, when initial velocity time is given, then we can use that formula. But here mass is given, force is given. Let us apply the Newton's second law of motion. According to Newton, mathematical form of Newton's second law of motion means from that we derived F is equal to ma. Children, in exam they will ask you to write a mathematical form of Newton's second law of motion. Don't write F is equal to ma. Rather, you should write here F is equal to delta P by delta T. This is a very, 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 very important. This is what very, very important. Okay, now fine. Now, addition. Look at here. One more numerical. Let us see here. Children, here is a body of mass four kg. Body of mass four kg, and initially at rest. Initially at rest. Very, very important. Initially at rest, and on this body, a force of five newton is acting. Five newton is acting. So that what happens, you know, it will gain after traveling of, for example, uh, two seconds continuously, the force acting, force of how much? 5 Newton is acting. Then what will be the velocity gained, final velocity gained by the body in a two seconds? So this numerical also, we can solve by using a physical dummy, but little small modifications we have to do. Look at it. First, let us write what actually given. Children here, initial velocity is given zero. So, force is given phi Newton, time is given 2 seconds, mass is given 4 kg and we need to calculate the final velocity of the V. Children, as we know that F is equal to ma, we know this. So, but acceleration is what? Change in velocity by time. So, this can be written as F is equal to mass into V minus U by T. That's it. Now let us substitute the values, we will get it. That is F is equal to how much is given? It is a 5 is equal to 4 into V minus 0 is V only by it is 2. 2 1s are 2 2s are 4. So it is 5 is equal to 2V. 
5 is equal to 5 is equal to 2v so v is equal to it is a 5 by 2 so this will be 2.5 meter per second so children so this is how we can solve the simple numericals in a simple way okay children thank you so much all the very best